Welcome to Misconceptions and Difficult Concepts in Chemistry. Today we will be touching on a commonly misunderstood area in more concept known as limiting reagents. Limiting reagents is actually a very important aspect of more concept because it determines the, the amount or the mass or the volume of the product which can be formed. So let's take a look at something which is possible in real life real life so let's say you have you have 10 burger burger breads okay let me let, let's not draw 10 we have three burger breads and you have four patties how many burgers can you make so common sense will tell us that because you only have three burger breads even though you have four patties here and if let's say you have to restrict one and, and if the condition is one patty per burger bread you can actually only make three burgers right and you have one extra patty left behind so in 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 burger making we would call this excess okay so what is the what is the the, the substance what is the, the the thing here which limits the number of burgers you can make it is not the patty because there's extra patty it is actually the burger bread right so with three burger breads you can only make three burgers regardless of how many patties you have you have 1000 patties you can still only make three burgers so in chemistry this is the same as well in chemistry there's this concept called limiting reagent so let's say for example you want to make sodium chloride by reacting sodium with chlorine okay let's say you want to react sodium with chlorine if I have 23 grams of sodium I have let's say 70 grams of chlorine what is the mass of NaCl which I can form which can be formed how, how would you know what is the mass so first of all we must determine is that enough Na to react with all the Cl or is that enough Cl to react with all the Na and we cannot compare by mass in mole concept remember the first thing is always to convert everything into moles because we can only con we can only compare in terms of moles. So the number of moles of sodium will be 23 divided by molar mass equals to 1. Number of moles of chlorine gas will be 70 divided by 35.5 times 2. Okay, maybe let's change it to 71 to make it easier to count. 71 divided by 35.5 times 2 equals to 1. So I have one mole of sodium and one mole of chlorine gas so it looks like this balance one and one so should, it, should i get one two no it actually doesn't work this way you must observe the chemical equation it is balanced for a reason this number here represents number of moles so if i were to read this chemical equation i would read it like this two moles of sodium reacts with one mole of chlorine to give me two moles of sodium all right okay so let's say we have one one now so let's read it again two moles of sodium reacts with one mole of chlorine to give me two moles of sodium chloride now I only have one mole of sodium so by proportion one mole of sodium will react with 0 0.5 moles of chlorine to give me one mole of sodium chloride this is basically a half Halving is half. Why is it half? Because I only have one mole of sodium. How many moles of chlorine do I have? I have one mole, which means I actually have 0 0.5 extra of chlorine, and this is called excess. So which is the reagent here? Which is the compound? Which is the element here which prevents the reaction from going to completion? prevents us from using up every single bit of reactant it is actually the sodium so we call sodium the limiting reagent all right so if i have one mole of nacl as a result of one mole of sodium the mass of nacl would be 1 times 23 plus 35.5 which is 58.5 Okay, so take note, if there, if, there, if there are enough terms in a chemical equation or in the question to allow you to calculate 
the number of moles of every single substance on the left hand side most of the time most of the time there is a limiting reagent involved okay so we must first determine what is the limiting reagent before we can proceed with the question because the product the product that is formed the amount of product that is formed is dependent on the limiting reagent it is not dependent on the excess reagent you form three burgers because you only have three burger breads not because you have four patties okay so once you have understood limiting reagents go back to the full video on mole concept and stoichiometry to understand more about the rest of mole concept and how limiting reagents applied in the calculation of almost everything in mole concept